Welcome to our reflection for Easter Monday. I hope you've all had a very God-filled Easter. As we bask in the glow of Easter morning, we reflect on a wonderful reading from the Gospel of John that to me sums up everything about the incredible resurrection of Jesus. The Gospel reading is from John chapter 20, beginning at verse 1. Early in the, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. Now Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And this is the word of the Lord. I'm forever saying that this reading or that reading is my favourite, but this time... It really is. Mary Magdalene was one of the women disciples that followed Jesus during his ministry, providing out of her own purse for his and the other disciples' needs. Her history is not very clear except that she had suffered from serious mental illness. She is described as having had seven demons cast out of her by Jesus. And her name indicates that she came from the town of Magdala, about three miles north of Tiberias, on the shore of Sea of Galilee. She was loyal and faithful to the end, standing at the foot of the cross with the other women who supported Mary, the mother of Jesus. When Jesus was buried, it was already very late on the evening of the Sabbath, and no one left the city during the Sabbath. So Mary had to wait until the Sabbath was over before she could go to the tomb. And even then, she sort of broke the Sabbath by going while it was still dark. The women were anxious about the correct burial ceremonies being done for Jesus. It had been done so hurriedly on the Friday that they were worried that Jesus hadn't been treated with the respect they wanted for him. So even though they would have had great difficulty removing the stone, at least they could try. When they saw the empty tomb and the angels told them Jesus had risen, the other women panicked and ran back to the city to tell the disciples in the upper room. But Mary stayed behind. She couldn't bear to leave. She is so distressed that through her tears and the low beams of the morning sun, she couldn't recognise Jesus as he stood beside her. She hadn't a clue that she would be the first to actually see Jesus alive, resurrected and divine. It was very reasonable to assume that this man was simply a workman. Can you imagine how she felt when she heard her name being spoken by the most important person in her life? Down through the centuries, a lot of nonsense has been said about Mary Magdalene, about her morals before she met Jesus, muddling her name with the other Marys and assuming that she needed to be dismissed as a needy woman. But the truth of the matter is, 
she was the apostle to the apostles by which I mean that she was the one that brought the astounding news to the apostles in the upper room that she had actually seen Jesus alive. And therefore she, a mere woman, had been chosen by Jesus to announce the resurrection to the world. It brings me back to the occurrence during the week before his arrest when the disciples were arguing about who would be the greatest in Jesus' kingdom when he came to rule. And Jesus' answer was that they were to serve, not to rule over people. They were to be the least, not the most. Mary, who had served all the way through Jesus' ministry, was awarded the greatest honour possible. May I finish with a prayer. Father God, we give you grateful thanks for the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that he had, has made it possible for us to be re reunited with you, our God, in this world and the next. And we thank you for his friends and disciples who have passed down the good news of the gospel to the later generations and to us, so that we may also rejoice and bring praises to his name. Amen. Thank you for being here today. Have a wonderful bank holiday. God bless you all and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.